What is going on, guys? We are back with another video in our Titans Online user franchise. Of course, this is the franchise with 32 users. Some people actually didn't know that was the case. Some people are still ask if it's if it's user or not. We uh, get Wesley Woodyard back. I really don't care, to be honest, but I suppose he can play backup. I mean, he's not that dude for me. I, I'd rather just use uh, Ulysses because, of course... The speed difference, the catching, the jumping, he's much better. Uh, of course, he's not as smart, but usually when U Ulysses is on the field, I use him anyway. So, it's nice to have him back, I suppose, but he's probably not going to see the field that much. Of course, we already showed most of the uh, awards for us, some of the stats for us, but we didn't go over the full league. So, first things first, we're going to take a look at our stats, we're going to look at the league stats, and then we're going to take a look at all the awards. Of course, Mariota had... An MVP campaign, unfortunately, did not win it. It's pretty much obvious at this point. 4,564 yards, 41 touchdowns, 12 picks, 67% completion percentage with almost 300 yards per game, a crazy passer rating of 134.5. Uh, longest of the year was an 80-yarder, 47 sacked times, almost 700 downs played, and then we move on to the man who actually almost did win MVP, and he really wasn't the focus this season. 175 uh, rushes for 1,800 yards, 10.3 yards per carry, 16 touchdowns. He fumbled the ball four times. I think we actually did lose most of them as well. He was also benched for a game. He, he could have broke the regular season yards record if he wasn't benched, but I'm not too worried about it. The main goal was to get Ronald Jones to X-Factor, and I think we've done that. I think we went from normal to X-Factor in one season. Heard, I've been thinking about re-signing him. I really don't know if we can afford him, though, because this team gets very expensive coming up next season. Marietta, 200 yards rushing. Heard, 200 yards, 3-3-1 for Deion Lewis. I just don't know if I can pay a guy like Heard as much as I love him because he can catch the ball. It doesn't really come into play very often anyway, so I think we may just let him go and some lucky fella can end up getting this man. So we'll keep going receiving back. I s nah. 90 speed, 90 uh, juke move is decent. Catching is pretty good. Let's go with elusive back. Ah, oh, he's a Viking now. Congratulations, Lance. Uh, elusiveness spin. Okay, fair enough. Uh, looking at the receiving now. AJ Brown with a th We really missed a thousand yards of Corey Davis by five. <laughs> by five. Uh, that's all right, though. 1,049 yards for A.J. Brown with only three touchdowns. We spread the ball around so much for touchdowns. I mean, you got three touchdowns for Pruitt, the backup. You have two for Hurd, one for Deion Lewis, six for Ronald, seven for Janu, seven for Batson, 12 for Corey Davis, three only for A.J. Corey Davis got the majority of the catches, but the majority of the big yardage plays were to A.J. Brown, which is really impressive for a guy of his speed. Now blocking, honestly, a pretty good season. You know, we get 9-11, hello, funny joke. Uh, really good blocking, though, considering, especially in a user league. Uh, defensively, though, super impressed by Cameron Wake. 17 sacks on the season. A little disappointed with Harold. He only had 9.5, so he's definitely not going up in dev. Wake, even though he's about to retire, could have went up to superstar. Casey, after his two-sack performance last week, goes up to 10.5 as a DT. Same with Jeffrey Simmons. His DTs have really just went off. Pick totals, uh, 12 for Adoree, unfortunately. If he would have had maybe a pick or two, he probably would have won best DB, but I do not think he did. John Brown with eight picks, eight for Kevin Byard, five for Butler, four for Jonathan Jones. I wish there was, this number was a little bit higher, but it's fine. Hooker with three, Tony Brown with two, and Telvin with two. Looking at the tackles, Telvin may have done enough to get himself to superstar, which would be huge for his longevity. Then you look at Jayon, who's 78. I definitely don't think he got enough, but... Maybe his stats are enough. I don't know. He had a lot of touchdowns. Or, you know, I mean, he did have a couple of touchdowns. Three, which is a lot for a linebacker. You know, a lot of picks. Decent bit of touchdowns. Four picks. Or four touchdowns on defense. Not bad. Suckup, I believe, did win kicker of the year with 17 for 17. Of course, he's like 33. He's about to be 33. I really don't care about that award. Kern, uh, I mean, didn't really punt too much. And that's good. Deion Lewis, just under 1,000 yards. Did have two uh, kick return touchdowns. Maybe he's going to be a pro bowler. Who knows? I doubt it, but you never know. So now that we looked at our side, let's take a look at the whole NFL. Patrick Mahomes was running away with MVP, but then some rules violations caused him to be benched for a week. And then during that bench, another rules violation caused the starting QB to be benched 
twice, which I believe completely snubbed him from the award win. Uh, Drew Locke with the most yards, but quite a bit of touchdowns or picks. Uh, I did learn that picks, turnovers do not matter really for MVP, which is, I mean, you look at the trend, there's a, there's not a whole lot of players that did as well as we did when it comes to touchdown to pick ratio. Lamar Jackson had a pretty good season. Uh, any other crazy numbers? Uh, Cam Newton was overlooked quite a bit this season. Where was he? Where was he? 36 touchdowns, 15 picks. Really good. You know, the closest by far for true passer rating. Uh, you know, Lamar not too far behind, I suppose. Phillip and company. But yeah, I mean, I just wish. I really wish that uh, turnovers mattered because Mariota probably deserved MVP with the amount of yards. Just really good touchdown to interception ratio out of this world passer rating, of course. Uh, look at the touchdowns. Who had the least amount of touchdowns of starters? Gardner Minshew, but I don't know if that was really the starter. I suppose Kyler Murray, supposedly. And of course, we have the most amount of yards. So best completion percentage, I believe, did go to Cam. It did. Cam Noon with the best. Wilson, pretty close, but a lot of picks. Uh, Lamar, really good. Mariota, just a couple notches behind him. Aaron Rodgers, a uh, lot of picks. Jesus. Rushing, we had some numbers, and... Of course, we are definitely going to be dropping the run-blocking sliders, but we felt it was unfair this late to decide to drop them. So we waited. Of course, the one big thing that stands out, other than you know, 2,149 yards for Todd Gurley, is 10.3 yards per carry, which is massive. Averaging a first down a run, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and there's a reason you know he was up there in the, the awards. I believe he was above Mariota for MVP. We'll see all that in a bit. Pretty much every team had a running, but look at that. Look at that. Yoshi with two 1,000-yard rushers. Of course, Lamar Jackson, pocket quarterback himself, pocket halfback himself, I mean, uh, with 1,000. But yeah, a lot of teams. It's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, had a thousand rushing yards in a in a season. Jalen Moore, you know, I mean, there's some guys that are really close here as well. Receiving now, Tyreek Hill with 43 yards per catch. That's unheard of. That's insane. Mike Evans with 1593. You're looking at these numbers, and yeah, it's not really looking good for us to get a dev up at wide receiver. So I'm not too mad about Corey Davis missing out on a thousand. Hopefully, somebody else can join us in that. Kind of with Robbie and Jakeem, a couple of these guys, I suppose. Preston, that's a big one. Uh, but yeah, that's five yards short. I wasn't paying attention to it. I had it marked down, but I just didn't look at it and really care too much. Just kind of went with the game and Mariota got the marks that I wanted. Uh, you know, 12 touchdowns, that was pretty good. So, you know, lacking in receiving talent for our ourselves, but we spread the ball around, found who we could, and Mariota, Ronald Jones had great seasons. Corey Davis, still a pretty good season. Uh, very good stuff. Longest, 100. Breaking NFL rules here. Uh, are you joking me? Paul Richardson apparently can go where no man can go, I guess, which is uh, quite interesting. Should take a look at the longest run as well. Might be 98. 98 for Todd. Peterson with 96. Who gave up a 96-yarder with to Peterson? What in the world? What was ours with uh, Ronald? 80. He had a couple of really solid runs. Uh, I really don't care too much about blocking. It's very hard to tell who's done you know, what and what sacked matters and all that. So looking at tackles, you see some big tackle numbers. You know, Quan with 124. Both of the young middle linebackers, Devin Bush and Devin White with over 100. 11 picks for Devin, 12 picks for Devin. <laughs> Both Devins, a lot of touchdowns as well. Who caused the most forced fumbles? Got yeah, to be a safety. Two safeties with eight forced fumbles. That's ridiculous. Who had the most interception return yardage? Chauncey Johnson with only seven picks. That's pretty impressive. Uh, where is any of our guys? Our, well, we had, you know, Jan. Well, yeah, he was close. 187 uh, sacks. Let's take a look at those numbers. Miles Garrett, Mack with both 23 and a half. Vaughn with 23. Same with Aaron Donald and Lawrence. You know, I mean, Wake was up there, considering how old them. He's like 37 years old, and he was up there. Really impressive stuff. I can't say much more about him. Surprised that uh, our kicker won best kicker, though. 
you could have given it to Carlson. Did they just go by a percentage extra points and then long maybe? I mean, I pretty much named every single stat you can look at for a kicker, but I mean, I guess it was really only between a few. So there is that most punt return or punting yardage goes to Lack Edwards. The least seems to go to Sam Cook. And that's technically his name or not, but everyone always says it's Cook. It's not. It's it's not Koch. Even though it's, I don't know how you make that analysis. I don't care. Matt Hack with an 81-yard punt. Holy crap! Holy, what was the longest kick? Longest field goal in the NFL was 65 with Graham Gano, Matt Gay, 64. Oh, I wish we had Joey. Oh, I wish we did. Suck up can win all the awards he wants, but he's not the kicking guy of the future. I don't know what the hell we're going to do at kicker. Return yardage, 2,000 yards for Jamal Agnew. Are you, what the hell? I mean, in fairness, Deion Lewis had 981. Most touchdowns goes to Danny Johnson, and then everyone else pretty much tied for two. Punter turns, obviously, a completely different story. Two for Boston Scott, and, you know, a couple, one for a few players. And that's pretty much those stats. I struggled through that. It was a lot of freaking reading. Hey, we had number one in yards. Nice. We really finished number one in yards, nine in defense? Okay, so we we had a season, boys. We had a season. Total yards does go to Kermit's Broncos, but offensive, the ones that we actually care about, goes to us. Best passing offenses, we were number five, I believe. Math is hard. And then rushing, we were number three. So, I mean, we were... Very good touchdowns, number four for passing, and then for, number four there as well. First downs, maybe not as many because we had a couple of bigger plays, but overall pretty good. Who gave up the most amount of points? The Dolphins, the least amount goes to the Ravens. We're at number four. QB sacks, 61, which is, I mean, you look at some of the other teams. Chargers, I mean, do I have to say anything? Crazy pass rushers, Saints, Cameron Jordan, Lawrence. Miles Garrett. Uh, the Redskins maybe not as much, but Kerrigan, superstar. Sweat, super fast. Might be a superstar here. Brian Burns. I mean, you look at all these teams that are up on the list. They all have a really insane pass rusher. We really don't. Fumbles, I'm not going to worry about that. We'd never have fumbles. Picks, though, we were number four. And I would say we all don't care about anything else, so let's go to the awards. Lamar Jackson is your league MVP. Todd Gurley is the second runner-up. Elliott at three, Mahomes at four, Ronald Jones and Mariota at five and six. Decent bit of running backs on the list. You got, what, four, five running backs, it would appear? No, six. I forgot about one. Um, <laughs> who won coach of the year? Damn it. Ron Riviera. Not even the real one wins it. That's unfortunate for us. Here is the AFC side. Ronald Jones with number two for offensive player of the year. And same with Mariota, number three. Really good season from us. I can't even be mad. Defensive player of the year goes to Mac Wilson of Rod's Raiders. That sounds cool, actually. Rod's Raiders. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Devin Bush, number two. Jamal, not bad. Oh, Jay on you little sneaky fella. Look at him, number 10. Little sneaky guy, of course. Uh, Josh Jacobs had a really good season. Wins offensive rookie of the year over Drew Locke. A lot of picks, but once again, I don't even know if that matters. because oh, Jeffrey, you little sneaky bastard. In fairness, uh, DT, you know, that's not easy to get 10-plus sacks, and he did it. Of course, Mariota snuck from number three to number one. He was number three for ages, gets to number one, and honestly, with that in most likely a Pro Bowl spot, he definitely should get an upgrade, right? Same with Ronald Jones, number one at running back, which is not easy to do. Have a quarterback-running back combo there, uh, wide receiver. Hey, Corey Davis, number nine, not going to get an upgrade, but that's fine. Marpet at number two, Saffold at number seven. All right, I'll take that. Cameron Wake, number three on the D line. He can make the Pro Bowl. Please do not. I'm actually, I might actually go with like D line retirement. I, I need him. Like he is so good still. Adore Jackson drops from number one, who is he was leading number one for, I don't even know six, seven weeks, and then just really didn't get a whole lot of picks after a little while, and he just dropped off and couldn't keep up. So unfortunate there. I was really hoping we uh, would have seen Bayard maybe. And then Ryan suck up the guy that we all clearly care about, right? <laughs> Just super care about that man, right? I don't, why do I care? I don't. Todd Gurley, of course, MVP, gets the Offensive Player of the Year nod. 
McCaffrey and Cam. A little uh, Ronald and Mariota action, basically. Devin White wins Defensive Player of the Year, obviously, along with Rookie of the Year. Uh, Quan Alexander had a really good season. I don't know how people are getting so many tackles. I really don't. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Slayton. Kind of a misstep because unless he's going to not use Tyree, he might have lost himself a development up on that one. Little bit of a misstep, though. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Devin White and then Sean Bunting. I see that actually a lot in rebuilds. Buccaneers got some guys to work with. Cam Newton gets best QB above Sam Darnold. I mean, look, the NFC is in shambles. I mean, look at the names there versus the AFC. I mean, it's it's as you would expect. Don't look. <laughs> it's as you expect for most part. Cod Gurley, Elliott, Breida. Breida's a really good running back in fairness. Really good backs on the, uh, the NFC side. Wide receiver goes to Mike Evans after a late push in fairness. He had a lot of really good games lately. Darius Lane with all the touchdowns couldn't keep up. DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel back to back there. Let's take a look at Best O line. Of course, Cowboys are going to be littered in this one. D line, uh, good old Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, Cam Jordan, uh, Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, all the big names really. It's just other than uh, this man right here, I'm not. I I think I can pronounce his name. I'm not going to do it though. Not a chance because I'll get it right and someone will still troll me. It does not matter. DB of the year goes to Trey Boston. All right, fair enough. Uh, I mean, that's interesting. Kicker of the year goes to Brett Mayer. What's his name? May here. I think it's like Mayher. It's like, it's not actually Mayer. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> but that's pretty much that. Let's take a look at any potential upgrades. Maybe even speculate who we might have to play. This is probably a bit of a long video. I'm talking a lot. My mouth is dry. My throat hurt. Feel, uh, Ronald Jones. Plus two to Morales, so he's only an 82 overall. It's going to be like an 84 overall <laughs> Superstar X Factor. That's rough. Uh, I'm half tempted to go with receiving. Because, like, what else do I really need? Like, maybe spin move just in case? Nah, we'll go. Just get the juke move and spin move. And then, I honestly, once you get to, like, 90s, we're going to go with receiving, I think. Oh, please be a speed. That's still a really good upgrade. If it was a speed or an excel, that would have been, oh, been moist. Awareness, break tackle, elusiveness, juke move, and spin. So that's pretty much what I want. I only need one more juke move there. As much elusiveness and spin move as I can. And then once again, we're moving on to receiving, I think, to get him going there. Anything to get his overall up, though, I suppose. I want to get to 90, get that second ability, which is probably going to be the spin cycle one. Which, I don't know if there's any one you can get better than that, to be honest. Looking at defense, we do have Telvin and Casey, however... With their ages being up there, I think Telfin, in fairness, would be fine at 28. With their ages being up there, I'm going to wait until potential regressions, and then we'll use them. So let's make sure we don't have any upgrades, which I don't think we will. Yeah, Tony, we're waiting because if he goes to 70, not only might it cost more to re-sign him, but if he gets an upgrade chance, a dev up chance, I think when you're under 70, you get the big boost. Which is why I think uh, Hooker didn't get the huge upgrades. I think he was at 70 exactly. At least that's what I think. I'm not 100% sure. So I believe uh, there's no chance to play the Ravens at all. So the Ravens are off the list, which is big because that's the one team you don't want to face because Lamar escape artist is impossible to stop. Browns, Broncos, and Patriots. If the Patriots win, we will play Nukes Patriots. If the Broncos win... We will play the Broncos, depending on what the Ravens do. But if the Browns and Broncos both upset their games, we play Micah and the Browns. I think we have a very good look to beat our opponent in the division. Of course, we did lose to the Broncos. But I think if we... if we, As long as... Yeah, I think no matter what, since I'm pretty sure we have no chance to play the Ravens, I think we're going to at least make the conference. I think so. I'm pretty sure we'll make the conference. I think. I don't know. But I, it appears that getting that last second divi or conference bye week, of course, we locked it up last second with a Chargers loss and a Titans win. We had the tiebreaker. And even if we didn't, we had the division wins of 6-0. and We saved ourselves a potential divisional humiliation. I'm not saying there's no reason to watch because obviously anything can happen. We almost lost to the Browns. We almost lost to the... Broncos, but 
it's a pretty good look to go into the the you know after this buy we're looking pretty good so that's pretty much that long enough video is long and hopefully you guys come back for next video if you like this video you know, if you like the sub if you're new i don't know anyways hopefully you come back for next video but until next video see ya